Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to this panel. This panel is about uh, collaborative consumption and B2B. My name is Juha Makkonen, and I'm the co-founder and CEO of ShareTribe. I'm, I'm moderating this panel. Uh, so first of all, I'm going to let you panelists to all, all introduce yourself and tell a bit about your company and, and what kind of uh, customer problems you are solving. And also, if you could mention quickly one organization, example organization that you are working with. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Uh, so I'm the founder of Share Your Office. In French, it's called uh, Bureau à Partager. Uh, there are two names. Uh, I know it's difficult, but that's how we 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 made it. Uh, so on Share Your Office, it's pretty simple. On one side, you have uh, companies who are trying to find an office, uh, startups, independents, uh, any type of company. And on the other side, you have companies who have spare space in their office. So imagine you have, uh, I don't know, 500 meters square feet, and then you have uh, you lay off uh, people, or you took too much space uh, in your office, and you have uh, some offices left. And these offices, you're not doing anything with them. Uh, they're there, there's too much space, so you rent this office. Uh, so that's how, what we call the uh, you know, shared office space. Um, so on shared office, you find uh, mainly two types of offices. How long do we have to present ourselves? Two minutes? Okay. Uh, the first uh, offices I mentioned is uh, companies who have spare space. Uh, that's one of the biggest uh, part of our clients. And on the other side, you have all the co-working spaces uh, that are like spaces. You, you all know about co-working, right? Everybody knows about co-working here, of course. Uh, so that's like the professional type of offices we have. So we try to bring together these people, uh, people who are trying to find space, and people who have too much space. But I think that's too much. Hi everyone, I'm Olivier Tizio, 32 years old. I'm coming from Nantes, in France, of course. <laughs> I'm the co-founder and sales manager of Truven. Uh, the project Truven uh, started two years ago, initiated by Mathieu Charon, our CEO and founder. Um, Truven is a classified ads platform in B2B uh, dedicated to employees of the companies. And in fact, I think today we are the only solution, uh, the only solution able to aggregate all collaborative services, all collaborative tools um, by the real identity. Um, Truvon allows what we call the trusted trade. Um, the cornerstone of Truvon is the trust. I think uh, it's the best way to enter in B2B. Um, uh, what can I say more? <laughs> in fact, um, we we wanted to have one unique platform when you can share all your needs um, in a good security. And if I could summarize Truvon in one sentence, I will say Truvon helps people, helps employees to increase their purchasing power easily. Um, as, a, as a Jedi will say, uh, it's a big market and I think uh, there's a big disruption in the force. <laughs> Do, do you have some uh, existing clients you are working with already? Yes, I can, can give you one, Gamepult, um, game designer in France. Um, we don't have uh, any particular uh, size uh, of size models. It can be uh, small, uh, small company, large companies. Um, that's it. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sam Cohen. I am 31 year old and I'm the CEO of a company called uh, B2B Entraide. Uh, this is based on a bartering uh, economy. Bartering is a bit like for Clement, you, we, we are like pointing out like companies who have excess capacities, like if it's a like product company, if they have like stocks or unsold like capacities, or if it's services, if they have like someone, an employee who doesn't, who doesn't have much work. Uh, we they can propose an offer like their um, their services or the products on, on on our web platform, and then they point out all the needs they have for the companies, which can be like printing or like hotel rooms, or um, or uh, legal advices or communication advertising, and then there's like this matching w w we have on the on our platform. That, uh, that helps finding the win-win situation between two companies and they can barter their, um, their, their products so they can exchange it. Um, it's, uh, well, to, today I, I will talk later, but today like the, 
our online platform has like 1700 companies so we kind of reach this critical mass that enables us to be very proactive in finding like uh, opportunities for two companies to exchange and we're also working on a uh, on the, uh, the release of a premium offer that will enable a company to use a credit system to uh, on, on, a, on barter credits to, uh, to, to, to reach like multilateral um, uh, exchange. That's, that's what we do. <laughs> Hello everyone, I'm uh, Kim Choa. I'm from the Netherlands, I'm founding member of um, Flow2. Uh, Flow2 is um, an online uh, uh, sharing marketplace where companies and institutions can put up their uh, equipment uh, for rent to other companies or uh, can rent out uh, their, the knowledge and skills of uh, its uh, personnel. Um, we saw the trend uh, uh, towards um, collaborative consumption uh, between, uh, uh, between uh, consumers and the peer-to-peer -peer, and we thought uh, there's an opportunity uh, for businesses and companies as well to share um, their, over, their idle equipment over capacity. And we started or we launched our website the 1st of June last year um, in the Netherlands, in the Benelux and in Germany. It's an English, um, it's, uh, the website comes in English. Um, we have a, a Dutch ver version and a um, <coughs> German version. Uh, we started in the, const in the construction, um, construction sector and uh, one of uh, the biggest um, construction uh, companies um, in the Netherlands uh, joined uh, our platform and uh, put up uh, about uh, 500 pieces of uh, heavy and light um, equipment. Um, at this point, we have about uh, 4,000 uh, pieces of equipment uh, which are being um, uh, um, advertised. Um, we have about 100 companies who are using our platform. Um, from um, from the construction company, we uh, from the uh, sector we decided to diversify and to open up markets uh, for hospitals as well. Because in healthcare, there's a lot of um, a lot of machinery, a lot of idle equipment um, that uh, can be uh, uh, exchanged between um, hospitals or um, professionals within that industry. Um, we are currently trying to get off a pilot project um, at, um, um, at, in, at some industrial areas where companies can use Flow2 um, to, uh, to, to trade their capacity, um, light equipment, heavy equipment, office spaces as well, or the knowledge and skills of, uh, of its personnel. Um, and, um, well, and, and the, la yeah, the last thing I wanna say, is that um, 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 we're, we're, we're witnessing uh, the, um, uh, 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 no, I'll, I'll leave it, I'll leave it at that, yes, no. Um, uh, okay, so uh, you're all targeting companies. Uh, now, as we know, people who engage in collaborative consumption have lots of different motivations. Some are in it for, for the money, some are in it because they like the social aspects or, or because they care for the environment. How is it for companies? Are they different? What are the main motivations? Is it all for the money or do they also have other reasons for for coll collaborating? Yeah, that's um, what we experience is that um, primarily the companies are in it for uh, for the money. Um, because um, if if they can rent out their idle equipment and get some money out of it, then um, it uh, will um, it, it, it will make uh, the profit higher, and and of course there's and uh, there's this um, um, motivation, um, uh, the sustainability mot motivation, but it's a secondary um, mo uh, it's a se secondary driver. The, f the, the primary driver is money. Uh, yes, I would also think that like given the economic context our, our solutions are are looked after by companies because like whenever there's some crisis people are trying to be more innovative but uh, w when it comes to company like the main driver would be like uh, business opportunities and uh, and um, and then the, we have to adapt uh, our service to them so that so it, it it's it's uh, easier to deal with because um, because they know uh, it's not gonna be just online, but they're gonna have also someone 
uh, taking care of them, and if they if they make a phone call, uh, they will have someone answering and trying to uh, to 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 lead them to these business opportunities. And then we uh, realized that uh, uh, most of the time it's it's uh, also good for company to communicate on the fact that they are like reaching. Uh, that they are trying to do business on a new way. So this is something that really is happening. So uh, as far as we, con we, we are concerned, we would like soon release a kind of rating that uh, that uh, that it would be on uh, on the platform and that helps like people recognizing the one who are using like our bartering solution and who are more in a collaborative uh, mood. I agree too. I think more and more uh, there is a quite a social uh, aspect um maybe because of the crisis or another context um in fact uh, fastcompany.com wrote an article called secret uh, america's happiest company uh because uh, we see it in france but uh, a well being uh, employee uh, is a productive employee and i think there is um in this article they say that there are five rules to have an happy employee and there are two rules which i'm interested in it's the one that's to emphasize work-life integration and the other one it's to recognize that uh, your employees are people first and workers seconds so i think um the cultural blockage is changing slowly but um we we are going home <laughs> Um, in my business, uh, office sharing, there's a big aspect of money, of course. Uh, I mean, any any collaborative consumption service, uh, people go 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 first for money, and then they discover the social aspect of it, and they they love it uh, or not, and they stop. In the office sharing, uh, it's like a dating site basically for offices, so people are actually living together, working together every day. So the social aspect of it is really important. Um, we made a little survey. Uh, back six months ago, and we discovered that one company out of two that are you doing a shared office uh, space, uh, they are actually working together. So more than one of two actually are working together. So it it it, it shows that it's working. Uh, people are actually sharing an office. They start talking. They start uh, working together, and that's a huge impact on their potential uh, growth, especially when you're a young company. And just a little. Uh, uh, example of that, I don't know if you know the company called Nurun. It's a big digital agency uh, that has like huge offices in, in Paris at Colonel Fabien. And they, we met and they say, well, we could uh, rent out this 400 meter square. They have a whole like part of the of their company who is not renting. And they could like rent it out to uh, one single company. And they say, no, uh, let's try to build up a little lab, a little space where we have a lot of startups because that's going to become our... Uh, innovation type of you know they they're gonna be like around us they they are gonna be so they're choosing the company we sent them 30 companies they chose like 15 and now they're choosing like four or five to be with them so uh this is interesting and and this is showing that they they're not they're doing it for money but they're also integrating the the synergy uh into the the concept uh, so when you talk to companies, have you found that they have already kind of recognized that they need this type of solutions or is, is it something new? Do you have to sell it to them or do they come looking for your type of solution? Uh, I would say like in France, because I, I've been uh, living like three years in the U.S. and working in the U.S. And in France, it's, it's like a, a, a way... Uh, different approach when you ask to a company uh, what are your needs which is something we're doing every day because to organize bartering we need to have a clear view of what the company can offer and what what are their needs and in france when you uh, when you ask to a ceo or a, a purchasing director of a company what are your needs he will be like oh, i'm not i'm not telling you straight away what are my needs like, there's like always this like this thing uh, where he's not really comfortable of doing it so uh, i think in france you have to uh, and especially when you have like innovative product, products such as ours, you really need to like explain them, sell them, and it's not gonna be like automatic. Like, okay, uh, 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 that's new. I'm go I'm 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 taking it. It's a it's it's a bit of a different uh, cultural difference. Maybe in Netherlands it would be different. Different. I don't know. And, and also, uh, do you, are you using some kind of like figures to prove that okay, this is how much you're actually saving saving money? Do they require that kind of information, or what what is the most the best selling point that actually 
uh, as far as for B two B on thread, lots of um, lots of uh, companies that we we propose to to register on the platform, which is actually free because we're on a freemium um, uh, uh, subscription on the platform. They ask uh, our references on do how, ma how many companies we have and how many transactions we deal with daily. And they want to, yeah, they want figures to to make sure they're doing the right choice and they're, we're not, they're not going to lose time or something. Um, for us, so what we experience in the companies is that we, we have to help them to, to understand what is collaborative consumption and why they need it. And it's difficult to find a good uh, interlocutor and um, to make him understand what uh, really the purpose and values of uh, collaborative consumption. Uh, in general, we give them two two figures. Sorry, it will be uh, French figures. <laughs> I only have it. 66% uh, of companies in France do nothing to help people to have a safety balance between professional life and personal life. And in the same time, um, we would like to, to tell that 42% of our life, uh, we spend it at work. So we try to, it's, it's like evangelize uh, in France and explain uh, slowly and give figure details and all, all what we have in, in our pocket. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, this trend towards collaborative consumption and, um, and the services um, we offer is, is an all new business model. And, and we have to sell that business model through awareness, through common sense. And, and, um, and we experience a lot of direct sales. So we have, you have to sit down with your clients and tell them um, about the business model, about the benefits of it. Um, uh, yeah, it's a, a, lot of, um, a, a lot of energy. We have, we have to put a, a lot of energy into, in, into an individual client. Uh, so uh, do you think that the most potential clients are, are they companies, big companies, small companies, or are they cities, NGOs? What what type of organizations do you feel uh, are the most kind of lucrative market and why? Just to start on your last uh, question, for, uh, for, for offices, it's pretty obvious because when you arrive to a company and they have a, a free space, they, and you tell them you could make money out of this and have a, a, some, some company who could help you with your problems, solve your problems too, it's like obvious that you don't need to to convince them. The only problem for uh, my business is the the there's a, a part of cultural, but it's security. Uh, and I guess some of uh, some with you too. I guess security is a big part when you when you have like people entering your space. You need to feel secure. They're not gonna steal your uh, IP or uh, or they're not gonna be using your space in a in a bad way. So that's one of the the main things. Uh, to go on your second question, since I have the mic, uh, in office sharing, uh, the big companies are not uh, really ready yet. Uh, and that's really cultural. Uh, it's really hard to go see uh, Orange and tell them, okay, uh, let's share your floor with like a couple startups. Uh, it's, it's, it's impossible. The processes are too complicated. Even with the company I mentioned, with uh, they have 3,000 square, square meters, so it's 300 people, Nurun. Uh, it was already hard because they have a processes, they have a culture. So I had to really be there, do the work with them, uh, explain them how it would work to create a, a co-working space internally. It's like a big thing for them. So on my side, it's really the, the bigger company, the bigger the company is, the, the more complicated it is. Uh, the smaller, the easier. Yeah, I agree. Uh, bigger the company is, bigger the difficulty is. Um, trust yeah, and security are really, really important in B2B. And in uh, in Trevon, in fact, um, until uh, until 19 employees, the sol the solution is free um, because um, we are selling uh, an online sharing marketplace. So, um, in the meaning word of sharing, we can't uh, make pay to a little company uh, um, a big uh, amount of the budget. So, um, we are trying to to improve uh, Trevon to the small, to the middle, to the large companies. But if large companies uh, is much difficult, but it's much interesting too. Yeah, um, 
for us, like the bartering um, opportunities we offer to companies is a, is a, a way to say, don't be like frozen and just uh, keep moving because we find solution for you that are like based on a win-win. So, um, so um, you don't need to be uh, like a, a CAC 40 or a Forbes company to uh, to subscribe to our like services. And what we experience is, in fact, like small companies are really more like likely to um, to uh, to move forward and to be aware of like proposition we can send. And uh, it's true that we have like uh, um, after two years of, of like like putting to company together on, on organizing these transactions, we have like a, a very good feeling that we, we managed to have a good success story of like small companies that have like stocks or, uh, or are ready to work. Uh, and we put them into relation with medias, like big groups like Figaro, Le Monde, uh, TVs or radio. And they sell their like excess products. And in exchange, they have like advertising like campaigns. So we, we, we're trying to make this link actually between like small and, uh, and uh, sorry. Yeah, I was telling Clément, <laughs> like recently we organized lots of uh, transaction between big media press. They are selling less advertising sp uh, space because of the crisis and they need more wine. <laughs> so <laughs> we're organizing like this kind of deals where we, we go to see like a uh, like uh, uh, wine distributors and they, they sell like their uh, stocks on an exchange of like advertising. So we make the links. <laughs> so, and we at Flow2 um, um, started um, to target in the construction company, the top 25 uh, uh, biggest companies. Um, and we're uh, r r uh, fairly successful because uh, five out of uh, five of them put um, equipment uh, on uh, put put, uh, put equipment on our website, and the biggest um, um, and, and the biggest and, and the biggest construction company as well. Um, with regard to companies based on um, on industrial areas, we are targeting the small and medium-sized uh, companies um, through their board of representatives. And um, um, that's going um, well. That's 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 going all right. Um, and with regard to hospitals, um, um, that goes through the board of the hospitals as well. And they are very um, they're very open to uh, to the idea to uh, collaborate um, um, in the in, in healthcare industry. Okay, then let's talk about a bit about business. Uh, what kind of business model do you have? Why did you choose it? Uh, um, yeah, we we um, we use the the, the, the subscription fee. Uh, there's a, there's a possibility for users to pay to, uh, to pay per uh, advertisement, or you can um, um, close uh, or you take a subscription to upload five, twenty, or unlimited uh, items. Um, yeah. No, there's no transaction fee because. That's that's really difficult to control because afterwards you have to ask the client, uh, did you have any, um, uh, did you something, uh, did you rent something, or so that's you can't control it. So you have to, we decided to um, to um, um, uh, ask uh, clients to uh, to uh, to arrange it upfront. Yeah, uh, and the contract is good. Yeah, is online. Yeah, or could be close between between uh, our sales representatives uh, and and the company. Well, we have kind of the uh, uh, opposite <laughs> um, business model because, like, um, since bartering was like um, a, a service already like spread out in the U.S. and most of Australia, Engl England, and Canada, but in France, we did like when we launched the business. We did, uh, before we launched the business, we did like a market study that revealed like seventy six percent of the CEOs we interviewed didn't know anything about like le troc ou l'échange ou le bartering. So um, so we had and we had like one main constraint was to have like this critical mass of like companies registered and uh, with with a, a very high degree of qualification about like the, the offers and their needs so we decided to launch a free, with a freemium like no no fees for like access on the platform the only uh, obligation for a company was to to uh, to to post at least one offer on one need 
which they were doing. And uh, we have like commission on transactions. And we, we try to control this because we have like this, uh, since it's not like automatic and we have to intervene, it's, it's both online business with the platform, but offline business with like meetings and like uh, conf, conf call and like uh, getting, getting uh, some energy to, to make the thing happen. So we, we take a commission on the deals, which is from five to 10% on both sides. Um, for Truven Access, um, companies paid an annual subscription, uh, which is based on a symbolic price. It's one euro per user per month. Uh, in fact, um, we wanted um, something uh, easy to understand. And it's like if your boss uh, pay you a cafe, one coffee per month. So uh, when we speak to someone, it's easy to understand um, that it's quite uh, an inexpensive cost. Um, and we've got partnerships. Uh, but with no fees, uh, it's a, a D system, a MacGyver model. <laughs> uh, in fact, uh, we we give them another visibility, another image, and they give us uh, a new service. So no fees, just a MacGyver model. Uh, on a share office, it's it's a it's a commission based on the fact that people sign a contract. So it's. It's a real estate business, so it's much more about commissions in this in this market. Uh, so we thought about uh, many different uh, business models, lead model, advertising model, and it's really uh, it's really a market that works with commissions. So we take five to ten percent of uh, the annual uh, 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 price of the of the the lease, uh, and that's it. Uh, it's pretty pretty straightforward. When it works, uh, just can I ask you a, a question? Because I'm curious, H how much is the the how, how much do you pay to to enter? How much do you pay to lend to rent the uh, the stuff? Um, um, I don't, no, it, no, it depends on the um, on the amount of items. Um, the pay per use is I don't know. Laurie knows the. Uh, I don't know because that's new. That's new. No, uh, the people who are renting stuff on our website uh, don't pay anything to uh, use the website, so uh, registration is for free. And when companies want to rent out their equipment or their services, uh, they can uh, pay per use, so they pay an amount for about 5 till 10, it depends on the kind of equipment or service, uh, per item. And then you have the subscriptions from uh, five items, 10 items, and unlimited items. And uh, that prices also depend on the kind of equipment or services, but they start from, I guess, uh, 30 euros and then uh, 50, and then the unlimited, I, I don't know exactly. I think the last one is 70, yeah, 70 euros a month. So, uh, what is the best way for you to find customers? Do you have to do direct sales, or do they come to you, or do you have some other marketing tactics? No, we use all the marketing and sales techniques uh, which are which are available to us, which is direct sales, uh, um, and uh, we do we do uh, we we are very present on uh, on social media. Um, we we write articles, uh, we give interviews. And um, basically, we use everything what's 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 what helps us to um, to get um, to get the word spread. Uh, yeah, it's the same for us. Well, and we adapt when it's like a small company or when it's a big company. It, it takes more time and energy because you have to go through all the hierarchy. One of the specificity of our business is like when we talk to big companies. Usually, if we talk to the commercial guy. Then he go. He's like, oh yeah. So you're gonna find us some new cons customers. That's great. I like it. But he's not gonna tell us anything about the needs. So then we have to go to the purchasing uh, unit, and they uh, they give us their needs, but they don't know if they if they have stocks. So uh, finally, we have to go to the to the top direction, and sometimes we already have spent lo lots of energy on the top direction. Say no, there's no way we do exchange. We just sell straight, <laughs> and uh, that seems can be a shame. Um, it's the same. We adapt. Uh, it depends on the size of uh, the company. Um, when it's more than 50 employees, we work with the Works Council, so it's easier because uh, they are really here for the well-being uh, 
um, as individual person and people, um, it, we just try yes to adapt it uh, to adapt uh, our business model uh, and um, the channel. Um, um, our, um, okay. <laughs> Uh, the qu the question was who do you work with in the company or who yeah, do you are, are kind of like what what is the best sales channel or do you do ah. direct sales or is there some other way to to get customers? Um, so uh, many of our customers are from uh, Google. It's a great uh, little website, uh, uh, and we've been working a lot on SEO. Uh, and for those who have startups, it's uh, the really a pain in the ass to to work your website on SEO because you make it really nice, and then uh, you have to make SEO, so you have to put like stuff everywhere to link everything. It's uh, it's awful, and then your website is not nice anymore. Uh, but yeah, SEO is the main thing, and then we also have like community management and all this stuff. But uh, yeah, most of sixty percent of our traffic is is bureau, Paris, uh, co-working, these kind of things. I like to add something. Um, we th there are a lot of um, uh, uh, um, organizations, governmental, non-governmental, who are researching collaborative consumption, and we are asked um, um, to uh, give uh, them uh, some input. So that's a way to, um, to 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 spread the word. Another way is uh, we connected with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation. Um, and and um, the, the Anna MacArthur Foundation is uh, one of the leading think tanks regarding collaborative consumption, um, circular economy, um, and they and, and they put us into a program, the Circular uh, Top 100, which is a platform of uh, 100 uh, big multinational companies who are aiming for um, a, a transition to a more circular economy in uh, three years. Um, and another useful way is to um, to compete uh, for uh, for sustainability prizes. Uh, so last week um, we 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 won a prize um, organized by uh, one of the biggest uh, national newspapers in the Netherlands. And um, tomorrow we um, we have uh, we have uh, an interview in um, in the paper. So that's that's a way um, to um, to make yourself known. I would say advertising is, is definitely a driver when you have like innovative uh, product. But just to give to give you a little like difference uh, among services, like basically if 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 you're talking about like launching an e-commerce website, then what you need to do uh, is you need to go to find a good uh, marketing mix, and then you start selling, and then you reinject and to advertise, and you have like more more people coming on your website and. Um, but it's it's a B2C model and it's pretty easy. Then when you if you're very focused on like a collaborative consumption, like the one who initiated a collaborative consumption for me is uh, in within C2C like business, so customers to customers. And when we talk ab here about like B2B business, uh, at some point you need to convince a company that that has been here for either like five years or three years if it's a small startup. But if it's a big group, it's, it's a, they've been like working for like a century maybe. And you arrive with a like fresh idea and like nothing is better than like face-to-face uh, -face or like direct sales because you, you have no other choice than just to show them that your solution can be adapted to their environment. Yeah. We, uh, we call all our clients on the phone. Uh, every Every client we call them. Uh, and and, and I, before we we I call my clients the people who have office to share, but now we also decided to call all the clients that are looking for offices. So we're starting to call everybody and just spend a lot of time on the phone. But it's the best way to explain them and to make sure they understand it and they get part of they 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 know there's somebody behind it and and that's reassuring. Yeah. So uh, when at Share Tribe, we also been trying to sell our solution to some companies and we also pitched that that idea to some some uh vcs uh, and many of them say that uh, the problem with that model is that it doesn't scale like when you do do a lot of direct sales and work with big companies it's really difficult you have to have a huge sales force so how well, what is your plan to make your uh, business model scale and build a truly global business 
uh, automatization. <laughs> uh, so the the goal is to make the interactions really effective and really short. Uh, so phone calls in five minutes, you get a client, and then it stays and it understood it's a good service, and then after that you automate all the relation. Um, but you know, one phone call of five minutes, boom, it's 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 already a, a sell, and the person is inside, and it's and they know they can do customer support, and and you, you go by email after. Uh, that's how we do it. The, try to be really short on the phone on the phone call, the first one, and then automatize everything behind. Automatization and ubiquity. <laughs> uh, I think uh, for us, uh, it's a long time. It's not short call. It's a long call because for us, you know, um, uh, the problem is not to, to to win the match to make the touchdown, but the problem is to go to the match. <laughs> and we have uh, we have people um, um, in the f at, at the phone. They don't know you. They um, don't know your name. They don't know your company. They don't know uh, collaborative consumption with these two words. So it's, for me, it's in general, a long call to have a good approach and to have um, a, ra a rendezvous. <laughs> so romantic. <laughs> um, for us too, we're spending lots of time on the phone because after we, we, we pitched and we explained our services to the, to the person in the company, we also have to talk with him so that to understand if he's uh, what in what kind of like uh, development mood he is, and to have a, a good vision on his uh, offers on his needs, which is not often very easy, as I said. Uh, as for the scalability of our, of our model, we are like um, now talking with investors to to launch a premium offer, which is like uh, a new platform it is the same platform but it has like new functionality and there will be like some fees and there will be like it will be more automatized in a way that the people can use credits and uh, can like make purchase online like services or products and be credited and then use their credit among a portfolio of companies who are registered to the same offers so this this will uh, actually automat automatize more like the the, the platform yeah, our goal is to um, well to become a global player, um, um, and that will take a lot of effort. Um, and we've we've decided uh, not to employ anyone. Uh, we have decided to work as a network organization um, and give everyone who has entrepreneurial entrepreneurial spirit uh, a chance to um, to develop markets, uh, specific markets, uh, countries, regions, whatever. Um, um, and I, I, I sometimes joke that um, that if we are successful, we can solve um, uh, a great part of the youth uh, youth unemployment because um, um, trading capacity um, um, within a company for a company is 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 a new is a new job because if you it's you employ people to uh, to produce something which is your core business um, and. Actually, um, sharing your assets or um, uh, sharing your your the knowledge and skills of your personnel is uh, a way to um, improve your. Uh, imp it's another way of making money, and uh, therefore you you um, you have to put someone on the task to make money for you with the assets and the personnel you have in that company. So it's a dedicated task, um, and we think that um, that will will the company be successful, it's needed that um, a lot of effort and energy and focus is put into um, capacity training. Uh, you work as a network, so you have no employees? No employees, okay. And when you say you work as a network, there's a, there are like independent people who are like using your, your uh, tool and they go to companies and ask them to rent stuff out and they take a share? How does it work? Um, our our customers, our users pay uh, pay the subscription fee, and that will give us the opportunity to pay to pay um, uh, um, uh, uh, a fee to to an independent professional um, who is developing a specific market. So, if you're, um, for instance, yes, yeah, and yeah. 
Yes, 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 yes. And so when you're based in uh, in Lyon, for instance, and um, you target uh, one or two in the industrial areas uh, where you can put co where you can motivate uh, companies to use Flow Two, then um, it's well. You, we know there's. The, you need direct sales, and then you need to um, uh, consult them with regard to the assets to uh, to work with. Um, um, that's a lot of work for, for that's a lot of work, um, and a, a person or or an independent professional or someone who is familiar with the culture in that region or in the on 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 that um, industrial area, um, well, he can put his effort, and we will pay him for it. Yeah. At this moment, we're working with 10 people. Yes. Okay, uh, so I think we have around 10 minutes left. So I think we could at this point start taking questions from the audience. So if you have a question, please raise your hand. We give you a mic and please introduce yourself quickly. And then any questions? Um, I have a question around culture, like company culture and this collaborative consumption approach. So it's working really well when we are all freelancers and we want to have a, a culture in common. And on the other side, many companies are looking for keeping a culture or make a culture company growing. So how, according to you, we need to approach those companies with this collaborative consumption approach, but but saying then that they're going to keep their culture and make them growing inside. Does that make sense? <laughs> Can you repeat again? <laughs> <laughs> no. um, so in uh, in my business, at least, uh, the the culture is really a big part of things because. Uh, there is a group, there is a company, they have their kitchen, they have their bathroom, they're like, they know each other. And then if you, at one point you put another company that works there, even if it's like four people and it's a small company, they still have their culture. They're, they're going to be in the kitchen talking and, and it, there's, a, there's a strange mix. Uh, so I would say uh, there are companies with a culture that they don't match, sharing doesn't match with their culture. Uh, and you can see it really, really quickly. Uh, you talk with the two managers or even the CEO and you, you feel already like the culture is not going to work out and you say, no, it doesn't matter, just leave it. Um, and, and then you, you really feel the, op the opposite, the company is open to that. So it's, it's a question of openness of the company. It's a question of uh, the people, and it comes from the management always, uh, uh, how they are ready to share and how they can integrate that. And often I say to them, well, just try, just have a freelancer, you know, just work, give your keys to a freelancer, sign a contract with him, leave him, come to your office. And if it starts well and then people start doing that, then that's when the culture, you can put some little thing in the culture and it goes and grows inside. But it's, uh, you have to start somewhere. Hello, very interesting. Uh, I've seen some of you are very specialized, like hospitals, like kind of verticals, or office space, or maybe a city, but at the same time you try to, to go everywhere. You know how my, my, my way of understanding is you first have to be very strong at something very specific, and then it's easier, maybe office space in Lyon or Paris, and then move to another city, or first hospitals, and then whatever, no? Yeah. So I don't think that's a problem because when you use um, uh, people who are specialized uh, in a certain areas, like um, we have Lika, and Lika studied, uh, studied medicine and managed um, uh, an hospital for a couple of years. And she said, okay, um, I'm going to develop um, uh, a capacity trading um, in that sector. And we have someone else who is uh, who specialized in, um, in in real estate, commercial real estate, um, in the area of Amsterdam, and 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 she says, okay, um, I know, I I I I I have a network of of of, of um, uh, people who I can activate. So it's it depends on 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 the quality of the people you work with. Uh, um, 
I'm, I, I, I agree with Kim because I think uh, w at Truvon we try to be uh, general, but uh, it means that the morning when you're taking, drinking your coffee, you have five minutes to answer your needs. Uh, you have to go to one website to your classified ads. One to you have to go to one website to carpooling. You have to go to one website to lunch group delivery. You have to go to one website and so on. And on our platform, you just have one entry to connect, and you can answer all your needs uh, by connecting on the API of the website or by um, a classic ad. So um, I am. Um, we love to be polyvalent and. To, we are proud to propose a global collaborative platform. Uh, any other questions? Uh, sorry for interrupting. Can I disagree or not? Or really quickly. <laughs> okay. No. Uh, okay. <laughs> maybe again. Uh, I think that's because you're like in, inside the company, uh, and yeah, uh, you've seen like uh, companies like uh, Zilog, who are uh, uh, they they rent everything, and now they go to they started WeCar and they do a vertical on WeCar. Because actually, people are looking for a car; they're not looking for a car and skis at the same time. So it's it's uh, this vertical, and also you're talking about localization is really important. Depending on the service, it's local. So uh, so it, it you have to take it service by service, market by market. I don't think you can mix everything, and and I, I don't think Airbnb could be starting to uh, rent skis. Um, they thought about it probably, but you know you have to be focused on something you do well, and be really good and be strong at this. And that's really the best way to to uh, have your competition uh, out. We're very happy with it because we that's the way to find also the biggest complementarity and to make things happen that wouldn't happen because if. If like especially when you talk B two B, if you are really specially specialized on a on a sector, then opportunities will not show up uh, from from other uh, other sectors. And we have a belief that uh, that uh, that that economy is now very structurized with like big groups, and then this all all uh, range of like uh, uh, small size companies. And we, um, and, and for instance, we know that all small size companies are interested for advertising. So we organize this deal with media, as I, as I explained. But there's like lots of, of uh, or not, not just vertical, but horizontal opportunities that we can reach. Yeah, I was wondering how willing companies are to share, because I can imagine that some businesses also, out of competitive reason, don't want to share their production stuff or anything that could reveal their competitive advantage uh, for, for, it's it's pretty true that first like uh, when you address your new offer or your innovation to a company like uh, we're in France so they'll say oh it's interesting but or but I don't have money so we say no no it's not a question of money but I don't have time and there will op uh, like you you find many ways of opposition on, on the on this business uh, that you propose but and then the the, the, the other trigger is like confidentiality. Some people are just hundred percent sure that they have like some strategic, uh, strategic information, and this is like uh, something really important to 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 point out. Uh, when we ask, it's the same thing. When we ask company, what are your needs? They're like, ah, oh, no, I don't have needs because they the think it's a it's a weakness to 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 express their needs. Uh, in the U.S., it's totally different. People just say, uh, I I do this, I need this find me a solution uh, so the confidentiality is the main thing on our, on our platform like the name of the company doesn't appear it's like uh, it's just references so to securize them on, on so they feel more free to express all the needs it's quite the same on our platform um, each company has the choice to publish inside the company only or to publish to all companies members of Truon. If you want to to be linked with another company, you can. If you don't want, you don't do. Uh, it's um, it's like a need. Uh, we respect the choice of everybody, and we try to to um, to let them choose what the best way for them to share. Um, well, one thing uh, it's interesting about uh, the uh, we didn't talk about uh, so much about trust, which is a big like world. Uh, uh, when we when talk about quality consumption, uh, question is what? How can you trust a company? You know, how can you know a company is trustworthy? Is it 
the company culture, the company advertising, is the people inside the company? Do you make a sum of the people inside the company and say, oh, this company has a lot of trustable people because they have like lots of friends on Facebook, so it's a trustable company? Could be bottom up or top down, I don't know. Uh, so that's question, probably like a, a good uh, uh, thing to think about is how if it's going to be a Facebook of trust of the companies uh, tomorrow. So you can say this company, they pay on time, they have good people, they're not like, uh, uh, yeah, they're, they're good, they're they're trustable. Uh, how do you measure that? That's really, that's, not, that's probably like one of the biggest thing we face if we want to go beyond B2B uh, quality consumption is how we, we make this uh, trust uh, company uh, thing. Which is not happening in the B2C, the, in the C2C either. We don't have any any service that makes you trust the person uh, aside from Facebook uh, and uh, the Twitter thing. I don't remember right now, but it's, there's not like an aggregator yet. And if, I don't know if it's coming, probably, but it's coming. So I think our time is up. Uh, so it's, it's uh, sorry, uh, unfortunately, time to wrap wrap this panel, but uh, hopefully this, uh, some of the panelists can be also here uh, a bit after the session. So if you have some questions, maybe you can ask them, them personally. Thank you for this panel. Uh, thank you for listening.